It's interesting how uh, people's statements or points of view can really be interesting when you sort of cross-reference them. We've got um, Heitleday has raised the issue of first-person perspectives. It's something that we've discussed before. Um, what is a first-person perspective? What is seeing existence from the inside, as it were? Um, Connor's talking about kaleidoscopes. That's a pretty good illustration, if you ask me. Um, although kaleidoscopes aren't random enough, if you ask me, but they're they're pretty darn good. Um, but something that, um, that that I like about them is the fact that your movement is implied or constant change. But constant change, even when it's random, that has certain rules to it. Um, it's not just complete random noise, say like watching a snowy TV screen or the way they used to look. I guess they still do. Uh, when you just sort of have no input into the into the TV and it's just turned on, you get just random gibberish. Um, I remember listening to uh, what's his name there, uh, Gould, uh, Glenn Gould, playing the piano, and he was playing. He was a piano genius. He was playing the piano randomly. Uh, he had somehow taught him to do this, taught himself to do this. He was he was a bit different up here. Um, and he taught himself to play the piano randomly. Uh, in other words, no rhyme or reason to the music. Uh, no melody, no harmony, no nothing. Just blip, 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 blip. And he was actually playing. Um, that's kind of what I see as sort of the noise on a TV screen versus a kaleidoscope or um, random alchemy as the screensaver. That's a better one because that's that's got randomness with rules in it. Um, <clears throat> but these are all interesting sort of systems, right? Because you have content, you have the image, and you have uh, interactions. The image changes. You have being, you have becoming there. Um, now, the interesting one is Pyro. Um, had a, made a statement on um, on um, Heidelberg's video, a riddle of existent properties, where he says all properties are system behavior. Now that is fascinating. That's a really good pithy one for you. All properties are system behavior. So there's a system, and the system behaves and it behaves in a certain way that creates properties. Now, what is in the system? Like, what are what are, what what things make up the system? This this goes to kaleidoscopes. It goes to random alchemy. It uh, even goes to first person perspectives. Um, what system are we we referring to here? We're referring to, I guess, whatever is external to us. Uh, and by us, I mean consciousness. Whatever is external to consciousness is the system, right? The matrix. And properties are behaviors of the matrix, if we want to use that metaphor for reality or external reality or externalism or whatever, externalizations. So, okay, let's say all properties are system behavior. Let's use my favorite example of a system, the human body. Um, the human body, in my opinion, is very useful in this regard because the human body is where we have kind of a merge of first person and system behavior. My ultimate nature, or the ultimate nature of consciousness, intersects in as much as we can judge these things with the system through the medium of the human body. My consciousness somehow affects the movement of my hands and my everything in there. I don't understand how it works, but somehow it, it, it takes place. Now, how does it happen? Well, th there's any number of ways you can approach that. I, my, you know, I, I decide to do something. I decide to engage my right hand. I put my right hand up. It goes up. I want to wiggle my fingers. They wiggle. 
I'm not really sure how that happens, how the actual in, uh, data from my brain travels down into my hands and does all of this. It's an extremely involved process. Um, and, you know, you can, you can describe it externally. That's easy enough. But internally, not so easy. How does this all take place? And really, when you start to deconstruct what's happening with your, hum with your body, what actually is taking place? Well, okay, muscles are stimulated, which causes them to do this, that, or the other. Okay, we understand that that does that, but how does that all work, though? Like, how does how do, how do the interactions take place? How does muscular stimulation relate to movement? Because muscular stimulation, I'm stimulating a whole bunch of muscles here differently. Some of them I'm telling to relax. Some of them I'm telling to tense up. Some of them I'm telling to stay more or less inert or neutral. Some of them I'm saying apply resistance. Other other muscles I'm saying don't apply any resistance to that. Um, I guess just anybody can do this, or almost anybody can do this. But it, it's a it's an act of almost mind blowing complexity. Or look at what's happening right here with the incredible development of these muscles, especially for somebody who is so full of himself and talks so much as me. Can you imagine the what's involved in me actually speaking um, muscle-wise? And then just bring in, say, the, the central nervous system. The incredible coordination of everything is enough to blow your mind out. And I'm, I'm experiencing all of this in real time now. Um, what the hell is going on? Well, it's all very simple because everybody does it. Okay, everybody does do it, but is anyone anyone actually aware of what they're doing? You know, Socrates has examined life, you know, that makes life worth willing, living, which is the examination of it all. What do you make of that? What's going on? <laughs> um, I don't think, you know, when you start to ponder stuff like that, when you st start to ponder stuff like, quote-unquote, everyday miracles or whatever, um, which I don't believe in, I think it's all more or less explicable, and it, it is a system that has rules. Um, it's only mind-blowing because of the sheer scale and rapidity and interconnectedness of everything. It's not There's no magic to it, I don't think. Um, but the incredible complexity and coordination of it all. Um, all properties are system behavior. Okay, what the heck is system behavior? what is going on when I use my body or when my body uses itself or whatever you want to say. It's all incredibly coordinated, interconnected, and you know enough to sort of overwhelm self-analysis. So we, and that's even assuming that there is an actual system out there. Um, never mind the brain in a vat or anything like that. But even there, you sort of go, okay, well, something believes that it's moving its hands like this, and that in, in itself, the, 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 the process of spinning that illusion is mind-blowingly complex. So you still can't sidestep it by sort of saying that we don't know. All right, what is the source of the illusion then? You know, uh, you're really going down the rabbit hole, right? <clears throat> the human body is where I think we are best equipped to understand these things. Because again, our consciousness is somehow anchored into the, in the human body, which gives us a perspective. That's what I, that's my interpretation of Connor's uh, statement that existence is uh, relativism. Because nothing can exist unless it's as a as a perspective of something else or holding a perspective of something else, and that takes place in the human body. Um, I guess it's just more more or less just I'm I'm sort of saying that the first person perspective, when you apply it to every a a aspect of the system that Pyro refers to, and Connor alludes to, and Heidelade alludes to, um, you realize that the inner is every bit as complex as the outer. <laughs>